catch up with Allison Blair, aka Dazzler, as she begins her world tour with an all-mutant crew while the world struggles with the mutant menace after the fall of Krakoa. Can she slay the charts and the bigots? Only if she's out and proud. Let's talk about it in our view of Dazzler number one from Marvel Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Dazzler number one. You know, when I write reviews, the normal process begins with reading the comic, then jotting down notes as I go to retain key points, diving right in as soon as the reading is done or shortly thereafter. For Dazzler number one, that process doesn't work. It's rare, and I mean very rare, but unfortunately increasingly so, to read a comic that impacts your senses to such a degree that you have to step away for a time after reading it to collect yourself and realign your mental state. Dazzler number one isn't a comic that you read and enjoy. That's not what it's about. Dazzler number one is a comic you endure, like, you know, a root canal without anesthesia, or several waterboarding sessions at Guantanamo Bay. Why would Jason Lowe write this tone-deaf tragedy? Honestly, the world may never know, or even care. But I had to suffer through it, so now I'm sharing my pain with you. Dazzler number one begins backstage shortly before Allison Blair's world musical tour is set to begin. We find her emerging from an equipment trunk as she is covertly smuggled into the venue to avoid the throngs of adoring fans outside. I'm sure there's some point being made there about coming out, but we'll leave that for now. After Allison comes out, she discusses the preparations with her stage crew and supporting musicians, including Multiple Man, who's a roadie of many hands, apparently, Strong Guy, who is a roadie of many muscles, sure, Domino, who's acting as head of security, Shark Girl, who's there as the drummer, and Wind Rider, who is Allison's PR agent. Before you ask about the mutants that are in attendance and why they're there, I have no idea. Why would Domino, who's sorted past and caliber as a fighter, be running security for a musical tour? Don't ask, don't bother, it, it doesn't make any sense. Writer Jason Lowe is merely playing with action figures in the sandbox. There is no rhyme or rationale for what's happening here. So I know you want to make sense of it and I, I, I implore you to <laughs> spare your brain cells. There is no sense to be made. As the opening scenes progress, Peppered throughout the issue is Dazzler's inner monologue as she continually reaffirms and validates her goals of being a good ally to mutants everywhere, showing the hateful bigots that mutant pride is here and how the greater mutant community needs to feel seen by and through her performances. Yep, the way it's being described here is exactly right. You heard that correctly. Dazzler number one to Jason Lowe isn't an ex title or a story about being an outsider who longs to find peace in a chaotic world that sees them as different. That's the more human condition, that's the more relatable and broad condition. This issue is not that. This issue is, in fairness, the thinnest of thin allegories about LGBTQ representation, complete with online testimonials from drag queens. All the narration boxes are colored as trans pride flags on every single one, and more, so, so much more. The stage crew and the musicians receive their marching orders and get to work, but Wind Rider pulls Shark Girl aside for a private, out-of-the-way chat. Wind Rider is concerned that Shark Girl's appearance may be putting the humans at unease because she looks like a walking human-shark hybrid. So she asks the shark-presenting mutant to wear a collar that gives her the holographic appearance of a human because optics matter. The scene between Wind Rider and Shark Girl is honestly a little bit confusing. It's strangely contradictory for Jason Lowe to craft a story about Dazzler with a cast of supporting characters who are all in on her mission to be seen and proud, while Dazzler at the same time employs a PR manager who appears to want to do the exact opposite. To be clear, Wind Rider isn't malicious and she isn't mean about her offer to Shark Girl, but it comes off as antithetical to the quote unquote message of what this issue is all about and what Dazzler is trying to accomplish. Later, Wind Rider has another private chat, but this time with Dazzler, and asks her not to use her mutant powers or fight if she's attacked on stage. It's a weird request, but okay. She urges Dazzler to let Domino handle any disruptions. Of course, a disruption does indeed break out exactly when it's supposed to. A few songs into the concert, Scorpia attacks Dazzler on stage. Rather than signal Domino to come on stage and deal with the problem, Dazzler uses her glamorous dance moves and singing to trick the audience into thinking Scorpia is part of the show. After a few close calls during the fight, 
Dazzler defeats Scorpia by making her pass out with her light powers somehow. Wait, 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 what, 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 Dazzler did what now? Yeah, I get it, you're confused, I'm confused, everybody's confused, I know. It's a mystery the way it's presented on the page. Scorpia in one panel is surrounded by swirls of light and she's just looking around as this swirliness is swimming around her head and then she passes out in the next panel. It's completely unclear what Dazzler did to defeat Scorpia, but there it is. Just go with it, accept it, let it go, and let's move on. The issue ends with the revelation that Scorpia was contracted to attack Dazzler by some unknown person. Presumably we'll find out in another issue. Shark Girl's hollow collar gets knocked out during the fight, if you want to call it that, and the crowd of course loves it. And then Jason Lowe tries his hand at writing song lyrics that you have to read to believe. They're peppered in throughout the dialogue and there's a full song, full page, lyrical breakdown at the end of the comic. And that's the issue of this is a multi-part miniseries at the very least. I don't know if it's an ongoing, but we'll find out. So let's talk about the positives and the negatives. Starting with the positives, this will be quick. What's great about Dazzler number one? In fairness to everyone who worked on this comic, the art is actually pretty good. Rafael Lorero and Java Tartaglia did their darndest to make this comic as visually appealing as possible. So kudos to the art team. They did their best and it kind of works. Visually, this comic looks pretty good. All right, so let's talk about the negatives and what's not great about Dazzler number one. Honestly, I, I struggle to figure out where to begin with this. There's really no point in picking apart the structure, the themes, the character development, all the typical things you would expect in a comic review. Dazzler number one really comes down to one basic question. Who is this comic for? The only answer I can think of at just racking my brain trying to come up with something that makes sense is that Jason Lowe decided to make a comic that imagine what it would be like, now follow me, imagine what it would be like if Taylor Swift started a musical tour designed to appease and entertain drag queens who spend too much time every day on X, formerly known as Twitter, wrapped in the skin of mutants and the X-Men brand. How did I come to that conclusion? Well, first I try to answer who is this comic made for, but I also try to look at it from the opposite angle is who is this comic not made for? Is this comic designed to entertain X-Men fans? The answer clearly, clearly is no. This is an abomination for X-Men fans. Is this comic designed to entertain superhero comic fans? Forget about X-Men or Marvel. The answer is no. Absolutely not. If you're into superheroes and everything that centers around the hero's journey, there is nothing for you here. Is this comic designed to entertain the vast majority of comic readers who have read and loved Marvel comics for years? No. Again, this comic bears no resemblance to a Marvel superhero comic that has persisted and gained popularity over the course of decades. Who is this comic made for? At a broad level, it's imagining Taylor Swift as trying to create a musical tour for drag queens on Twitter, but really it comes down to something a little bit more personal. This comic is made for and by Jason Lowe to show the entire world he's the best ally ever. And if it gets canceled quickly, or loses Marvel a bunch of money in the process, that's fine because it's not Jason Lowe's money anyway and he doesn't really seem to care. Final thoughts, what do we think about Dazzler number one? It's an embarrassment of riches for people who like the idea of Marvel superhero comics but don't actually read Marvel superhero comics. Jason Lowe's script is a mind-boggling array of social activist talking points, nonsensical character representation, and painfully tone-deaf plot development. But at the very least, the art is pretty good, so that's something. If you read Marvel superhero comics because you like Marvel superhero stories, avoid this issue at all costs. Therefore, Dazzler number one earns a four out of 10. I often hear the comment that readers such as myself won't like a comic because it's just not made for me. Okay, in this case, I agree. And I would suggest the population that it is made for isn't big enough to support the cost of one variant cover. That's my opinion, but what do you think? Am I being too hard on this comic and its writer? Leave a thumbs up if you think I'm just being a grumpy old grump. I'll, I'll take that. And drop a comment below with why you think this issue is great. Or not if you agree with me. Why don't you give me some validation? I, I don't mind to pat it on the back once in a while. Also remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel if you want to subject yourself to it. That would, I'll take it, sure. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.